Are you sick and tired of COVID? You're not alone. Here's the COVID frustration my clients are experiencing. People should stop telling me everything is fine because it's not. I feel trapped, like there's no way out. I feel so helpless. I'm fed up with everything. I hate all the uncertainty. I hate this constant fear. I hate all the limitations. I hate that I don't have control over my life. I hate it. I just get irritated by things that don't matter. I feel anxious all the time. Either that or I just start crying for no reason. I'm just a mess. Some are experiencing lockdown fatigue. Others are experiencing full-blown lockdown depression. In this video, you learn what COVID depression is, you learn what are the most common symptoms of pandemic depression, and also how to overcome it. Hi, I'm Katya, I'm a psychologist and psychotherapist from Slovenia, and I'm here to help you skyrocket your self-esteem. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of my new videos. So what is COVID fatigue? COVID fatigue is the result of prolonged isolation due to coronavirus. It's the result of all these different regulations that are constantly changing and the result of the fact that we don't know yet how and when all of this will end. In other words, people are simply tired of feeling anxious all the time. Coronavirus is also threatening some of our very core values, such as being close to others, hanging out with different people, having a quality education, being able to travel, experience new things, and so on. A client of mine recently said, first the pandemic began, then I lost my grandma to COVID. Now I lost my job as well. What more will the future bring? I'm so anxious. I don't know how much more I can take. I used to be a positive person. I'm not anymore. I just feel so down, so lost. COVID has shattered the illusion that nothing bad can happen to us. In psychology, we call this optimism bias. It's a sort of mental fail, so to call it, where we believe that we are less likely to experience a negative event than others. For example, a man who is drunk driving believes that nothing bad will happen to him because he's being more careful than other drunk drivers. Optimism bias can be healthy for us in some ways. It's okay to temporarily forget all the dangers that are always around us. Somebody who has no optimism bias feels anxious all the time. COVID has made many people realize that bad things can happen to them. They or their loved ones aren't safe or immune from bad things. And this is a really scary feeling. This feeling can even lead you into anxiety or depression. So what is happening to us? Watching the news, reading social media posts about coronavirus and so on makes our body go into fight or flight mode. What is that? Fight or flight mode is our body's response to perceived danger. Let's say that an angry man with an ax is running towards us. Our body will release chemicals such as adrenaline and stress hormones to help us survive. So to either run away from the man with the ax or to fight him and hopefully win. The fight or flight mode only lasts a short time. Our bodies are not made to be in constant fight or flight modes. But this is exactly what's been happening to so many people since the pandemic started. Their body is in constant fight or flight mode. This leads them to chronic stress and unfortunately it affects their immune system as well and their health in general. Not only physical health, but mental health as well. According to Time USA, a pre-pandemic survey found that 8.5% of people showed strong enough signs of depression to warrant a probable diagnosis. When researchers asked American adults about their mental health from March to April 2020, 
that number rose to almost 28%. Even more people, almost an additional 25%, showed milder signs of depression. Researchers also found that people who said they had less than $5,000 in their savings were more than 50% more likely to experience depression than wealthier people. Women were also more likely to experience depression than men and single people were also more likely to experience depression than married couples. So what are the symptoms of depression? Watch out for emotional changes like feeling depressed, feeling empty, sad, hopeless, powerless, feeling frustrated or having no feelings at all, feeling emotionally numb. Watch out for thinking changes as well, like worrying all the time, ruminating, being very pessimistic or having trouble concentrating and so on. Watch out for behavioral changes as well, like avoiding stuff or having no interest in doing things that normally would bring you joy, having no motivation and so on. Watch out for physical changes as well, like having sleep troubles or having no energy or having no appetite or having really strong cravings for a certain type of food and so on. So how to overcome pandemic depression? Here are practical ways how to overcome COVID depression. The first two things you can do is to go outside and exercise. Natural sunlight and exercise are both natural antidepressants. So go outside and be active. Go for a walk in the park or a hike in the forest. Just go outside. Don't be indoors all day alone with your thoughts. If you work from home, take mini breaks and go outside. If you can't do that, at least open the window to let in some fresh air. So go outside and exercise. The next thing that can help you is to keep a normal sleep-wake cycle. So don't stay up late in the night reading about COVID or watching the news. Instead, go to bed and wake up in the morning at the time that you normally would. The next thing is to eat healthy. Avoid binge eating, junk food and other unhealthy food. Avoid alcohol and drugs as well. Alcohol is a depressant meaning it will make you even more depressed in the long run. The next thing you can do is to limit your time watching the news and reading about COVID. So set a time in a day when you check the news and that's it. In the meantime, do the things that you enjoy and are good for you. Another thing that is crucial for overcoming COVID depression is to reconnect with others. I've made another video on how to overcome loneliness during coronavirus and how to reconnect with people during lockdown and I'll put the video down below so that you can watch it. If you are experiencing the symptoms I mentioned before over a prolonged period of time, make sure you talk to a licensed psychotherapist. It's important that you seek professional help if you need it. So there you have it. This is how you can overcome coronavirus depression. I've also made another video about overcoming coronavirus anxiety. So if you feel anxious as well, make sure you check out that video as well. Did you like this video? If you did, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot and make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of my new videos. You're also very welcome to join my free Facebook group called Skyrocket Your Self-Esteem. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.